All right, it's me, Carl Irwin, the Common Magician. This is my Zero. This is uh, what we're talking about. So this is how I. This is this is my if my go-to Zero. This is how I do it, and then I'll talk about it and talk about some other things. Part of the conversation. So whenever I do a Zero, it usually looks like this. Okay, I do the two shuffle sequence. Every time I don't do the slip cut variety, I do it like that, two shuffle and then a cut. Um, so let's talk about this and, and what's going on and other things related to the discussion. First of all, the angle of the camera is fair, okay? I'm giving you, you see I'm hunched down here because I have my camera set at eye line across the table. So this is this is the fair view. This is the real estate of the deck, right? That you see from that perspective. Most of the videos you're, that we've been looking at, and that you'll see at least in marketed uh, zero videos, they look more like this. Is like a good thirty degree addition, and that's the real estate you get. And that's not on purpose, and I understand why. Uh, but it is it is uh, something I think that's worth noting. So when we've been looking at these other, uh, the, I know the Gary Plants video, the Steve Reynolds one. They they were they were here right for those for those videos. Um, I just just making a point of it. Okay, so this is this is the more fair view, and you're going to see more of the tells this way than you would the other way. Um, I am a nobody. I'm just a guy, just a dude that does magic. Uh, my profession is I'm a musician. I went to music conservatory. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher, public school teacher. If I go to conventions. Uh, it's going to be an education convention or a music convention. That's my; those are my priorities in life. That's what I do. That's where I spend my time. Okay, I don't go to magic conventions. I don't do that sort of thing. I'm a hobbyist. I perform for family and friends infrequently, and then I do this uh, stuff on YouTube where I talk to other people like me and uh, help them do what I do better. Right. So that's 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 my perspective. I know some of you are pros. Some of you are professionals that you you make a living on this. You go to the conventions. You go to the, uh, you do the lectures. You know, you do the high profile gigs. You do some, um, you know, performances at pretty elite places. I I understand that. So and I highly I highly respect that too. So I just want to say that publicly. I respect your experience. Right. You have a whole lot more than I do, um, but. Given that, I think that there's some misunderstanding in terms that we have whenever we discuss some things. So, again, I'm a I'm a musician. Did the music conservatory. So, I just want you to understand when I say good enough, uh, I don't mean mediocre. Okay, when I say good enough, I mean wholly sufficient, fit the bill. Right? It it is perfectly adequate to um, to perform. So when I say that performing a zero shuffle tells an all, if you do it right with the tells, that is good enough. I don't mean that it is substandard, but good enough. I mean it is wholly sufficient, all right? So please don't paint me into some other corner because I'm not saying what I think some of, some of you might be thinking I'm saying or trying to say that I'm saying. Um, the other thing I wanna point out is that when we talk about the lay spectator, I think we are unfair in categorizing the big group. Okay, the lay spectator is the big group, the massive group, the 99.9% .9 of people is the lay spectator. I think it's more correct to classify the magician. Okay, so when I say we perform for people, we're, I, I mean we're performing for the lay spectator, right? The, the, the big group, that's everybody. As a hobbyist, that's all I perform for. I never perform for magicians, except for on social media or whatever here like this. Some of you who are professionals that do the, you know, the magic circuit, you do the lectures, you do the conferences and the conventions and the high profile gigs, you often perform for magicians. I understand that, I do get that, but there's more of me than of you, a whole lot more of me than of you, right? The, the common magicians out there. So. I think that when I'm talking about doing a zero shuffle or any other slight where there are tells, I think my perspective is extremely valid, right? That um, we are performing for the lay spectator as the big group, not the special group. Okay, so I just want to say that too. Um, 
Also, given that, I think it's important to note that the tells that go along, the, the things that are really part of the DNA of some of these moves, like a zero shuffle, certain tells that go along with that, um, those things are not flashes, right? We talk about flashing something where the spectator sees something they're not supposed to. A tell is something that is on full display. I did a video on this some time ago, about a couple weeks ago. Um, a, a tell is something that is on full display, but the spectator is in the information in the information gap. They don't know what the tell means, right? They they can't know that. They don't even know that there is a tell. They just see a shuffle. They don't know that you're you know the magician is doing something that is slightly out of the norm that allows it to work. They just see a shuffle, okay? The magician, on the other hand, they know, they're, they're, they're not in the information gap, they know the tells. So a magician can watch a, a great cups and balls routine and they know everything that's going on and they can still love it. They can still appreciate it, even though they recognize every tell that's in there, right? Um, someone mentioned Jason Ladani. I don't know him, I'm not a professional, I don't run in circles with him. Some of you do know him, I'm sure. Um, but it got me thinking. He does a lot of social media content where he'll do videos that are for magicians, for, for the you and me out there that subscribe to his stuff. And he'll do stuff that is supposed to blow our minds, and, and a lot of it does. But I'll point out that he never does push through shuffles to do that stuff. He never does a zero shuffle to do that. He will often rely on a more obscure principle in order to accomplish what he's trying to do. Uh, because we're the target audience, right? So to say that, you know, someone like Ladani's got a, uh, a push through shuffle that would just slay anybody. I don't think that's quite true. I think if he's really trying to slay the magician, he's, he's not going to do that. I've not seen him do that. But if I've seen, if you look at his, like his castle routine that he shares and some of his other stuff and people like him, you'll see that he does resort to the zero shuffle. He does resort to the push through shuffle. He, re he resorts to things that magicians that are in the know, even a hobbyist like me, I see that stuff. I know what he's doing. I see it, right? And he's doing it because he's a professional. He's doing it because it works really well, okay? Those are my observations as a nobody. That's just what I, that's just what I notice. Um, couple things about the zero shuffle I think that are worth noting in the way that I do it. So first of all, there is um, there are some additional things that you can do that add tells, but also take care of other tells. For example, when I shuffle, no shuffle normally, I shuffle like this. I take my right packet and I jog it forward. So if I'm doing a real shuffle, right, it looks like this. My real shuffle looks like that. And I've modified my real shuffle to look like that because my zero looks like that. I choose to make my zero look that way. It's my choice. It's my shuffle, I can do it how I want to do it. And that's how I do it. So um, some people will jog back. Herb Zero on his video, Herb Zero on the zero shuffle. And of course, he's, he's older when he made that video. He does, uh, by my recollection, he does a couple of variations that do this. That, that was something he preferred for some of the variations where he does the back jog. It does give a little bit more cover uh, whenever you do it. It gets rid of some of those tells. Then there's the Gary Plant, Steve Reynolds type, right? Their kind of philosophy, I think, is much more that if you're going to do it, it ought to have a square. It ought to be done square, right? It ought to be done this way. It, it shouldn't have it shouldn't have an additional jog. I don't know why they think it has to be that way because it certainly doesn't. I mean, you don't have to do this. If I sh when I shuffle this way, family and friends never point it out, right? Spectators, real people, they don't. It's just, it's, the cards are being shuffled, right? Um, I think that their attention to that detail is derivative of casino-y kind of, I think I made that word up, casino-y, right? Casino type standard procedure that they're trying to just get as close to that as possible. But I think that's an arbitrary goal. It's just their goal. It's not necessarily one that you have to do. There's no reason why you have to do that, okay? So I have opted not to bother. But you know, that, that Gary Plant sort of uh, idea that if you do square and you give the proper cover, and that was, you know, that was more like what he would do, 
there's, you know, the way you do that, the Gary Plants way, is that you give the cover. You just you cover up with something else rather than with the cards, right? The Steve Reynolds one, and I, I can't do it justice. I, 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 I probably could, but I'm not going to attempt it here because if I get it wrong, I don't want to, you know, flash to high heaven for everybody. But it seems to me, um, and I've never, I've not seen Steve Reynolds' other videos. I've seen his kind of older stuff when he did his Penguin Live. I, I got that video uh, way back when. And that's where I first saw his Zero Shuffle and him do it. And it seems to me from the little bit that he covered on that, his interest is, is more so getting to this place right here. He wants to get here as fast as possible. So it has an open view, and then he can deal with the convincers here, right? So you get from here to there right away. That seems to be his philosophy. That's what he does, okay? And, and you know, whatever. That's a way to do it. I don't think you have to do that, though. Certainly there's convincing shuffles that don't look like that. So... Um, those just seem to be the the typical ways to go about this, right? The Doug Edwards one, uh, which is which is more like the uh, the the what I said, the rear jog, right? That's what he does. He does a rear jog, and and gives it cover that way. That's his his variety. So there's that way too. These are all valid. I don't think there's a right way to do this. I think it. I think convincing is the goal. You're convincing spectators that the deck is being shuffled. You know, that's the goal. That's the end goal. Um, you can't convince them more. Once they're convinced, they're convinced. You can't really do better at it if it's convincing. You know what I'm saying, right? I can play my music the way the composer intended me to play it right? I can't do it more like the composer intended it if I'm already doing it like the composer intended it. You know what I mean, right? I can practice drills and I can practice techniques and I can become more secure and whatever, but I do believe in perfect. You know, I think there is perfect. I think that people, have you ever taken a quiz? I tell my students this because I have a lot of students that grow up hearing, you know, um, nobody's perfect. They hear that. And I say, yeah, I understand that, but we are striving for perfection and it's attainable, right? Have you ever taken a quiz where you got all the answers right? You know, and my younger students will say, yes, I've, of course you've done that. I say, that's perfect, right? You, you've, you hit it all. And I think when we're looking at this stuff, if you are being deceptive for the audience, Right? If the audience is deceived by it, if they, if you do a false shuffle and they believe that you have shuffled the cards, that is perfect. That's perfect. You might satisfy yourself more by changing it in some way, but you aren't really changing their perspective, I don't think, a whole lot, right? You know, you're just really sad as you're, you're really just, you're really fulfilling your own eye candy when you're doing that. Uh, and, and that's a worthy endeavor for sure, right? Uh, but I think, I think my point here again is that the goal is to be deceptive to the lay audience, and that is the big group. That's the real audience. Those are the real people. And the zero shuffle is that kind of a move. It, it fits in that category, and it's known for it. So that was uh, not quite 15 minutes, uh, a bit of a rant on this, and I showed you mine and the one that I do, and some of you will hate it, and you will uh, disown my ancestors and eat me alive or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't care. Nobody, nobody suspects that when I do it, ever. You know, it's, it's wholly sufficient and deceptive doing it the way that I do it and that's the way I've settled on it and to source people I get that from a Damien Neiman that's that's the person that I saw that did the front jog that I liked that I saw that I said you know I think that's a good practical pragmatic way to deal with the shuffle and that's how I'm going to do it so that's that's the decision I made um, and to each their own so anyway thanks for the discussion and, um, yeah, happy magicking.